All right, we're ready for social studies again on this Wednesday, and we've got another interesting lesson today. We're not going to talk about anything, um, a new topic. We're st going to stick with the Declaration of Independence today, but we're going to talk about some different things. You know, when we think back to when the Declaration of Independence was written, we have to understand that our country was a lot different than it is now, and people believed things different differently than they do now. And uh, the society was different than it is now. What do you mean, Mr. Helton? Well, during this time when the Declaration of Independence was written, um, there was slavery in the United States. And you've heard a lot about that on the news lately. And it was a very sad time in, in our country's history. Uh, we weren't the only country with slaves, but we did have slaves in the United States. Now, later on throughout this year, you're going to you're going to see that we we get it right finally. And we finally realize how evil slavery is. And when Abraham Lincoln's president, several years later after this, almost 100 years, we finally say slavery is wrong. No more slaves in the United States. But during this time, for about the first 85 or 90 years that the, our country existed, slavery, slavery was in our country. It took another war, the Civil War, to end slavery. And so it's important to remember that people were mistreated, but it's also exciting to celebrate. It doesn't happen anymore. Slavery is not around anymore. We are now all equal in our country. But the text we're going to look at today talks about that idea that when the Declaration of Independence was written, it didn't really set everybody free because the slaves were not free. And of course, some of the American Indians whose land we were taking away, well, their rights weren't being met either. So it's an odd time in our country, uh, a time to celebrate the birth of a new country and uh, a time to celebrate our freedom. But it's a time to remember that it took a while for us to make sure everybody was treated equally. So today's text is called Endowed by Their Creator. And the picture up here shows something that we'll talk about a lot later on in, in social studies this year, and it's slavery. And you see this lady up here, this this black lady and a black man over here. And what's happening is they're being sold. And we'll talk about the slave trade and how people were actually sold. Like you might go to a, a livestock sale today where they sell cows and horses. They were selling people too. And so it's sad, isn't it? So today is going to kind of take one of our standards where we have to compare the what the Declaration of Independence said and see that it didn't really set everybody free. So that's a hot topic. And so I know there's lots of opinions on that, but we're going to just stick with the facts today. OK, and this is called Endowed by Their Creator. So let's read this text before we return to the Revolutionary War. Let's make some points about the Declaration of Independence. The 56 delegates who signed it had certain things in common. They were all European in origin, meaning they'd come from most of them from England or somewhere over there in Europe. And they all had white skin. They were all men. There weren't any women that signed it. They all owned property, which meant they were pretty wealthy. There were no American Indians among them. Thomas Jefferson's words about how all men are created equal and that they were endowed by their creator with the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are important words to know today. Written at a time when almost everyone in the world was governed by a king or queen, the Declaration of Independence was and remains an incredibly important document. We know today that the Declaration of Independence was an inspiration for many revolutions and rebellions in France, in South Africa, in India, and many other points on the globe. So it's a it's a document that represents freedom all over the world. However, Jefferson's words were not intended to create a society where every human had equal rights. In 1776, there were 2.5 million people living in the colonies, not including Native Americans. Around 500,000 of them were slaves. As you learned in third grade, these people had been forcibly taken from Africa or they were descended from people who'd been forcibly taken from Africa. There were slaves in every colony, although by 1776, most of them lived in Virginia, Maryland, and the Carolinas. Thomas Jefferson, 
who wrote the Declaration of Independence, right, was a Virginia planter. He was a farmer in Virginia, owned a plantation, and he owned 150 slaves. Thomas Jefferson did. So when he wrote that all men are created equal, Jefferson wasn't talking about slaves. Although it may not have been obvious at the time, the American Revolution did not improve the life of slaves. Although the vast majority of African Americans living in the colonies in 1776 were slaves, not all of them were. One of the first Americans killed in the war was a free black man named Crispus Attucks. Remember the Boston Massacre? He died there. An enslaved black woman, Phyllis Wheatley, lived in Boston and in 1773 became the first published African-American female poet. In spite of her accomplishments, most whites who lived in the Revolutionary War America did not view blacks as equals. Women were not, also not considered to be first-class citizens in 1776. Jefferson's words about men being created equal didn't apply to women, although many women wished it had. In March of 1776, Abigail Adams wrote a letter to her husband, John Adams, who was then a delegate to the Second Constitutional Convention. She says, remember the ladies, Abigail wrote, and be more generous and favorable to them than your ancestors. Do not put such unlimited power into the hands of the husbands. <laughs> she says, give the women some rights too around this place, buddy. However, the Declaration of Independence did not address the relationship between men and women. Women would not be allowed to vote in the United States for more than a century after the American Revolution. Slavery would actually end a long time before women were ever allowed to vote. There's a, pa a park here in Boston with a statue of Abigail Adams and a statue of Phyllis Wheatley. There's Abigail Adams, Phyllis Wheatley, Abigail Adams, John Adams' wife, fought for women's rights. Phyllis Wheatley, a freed slave who became a poet. The Declaration also did not mean poor men had a say. It would be several decades until men who did not own property would be allowed to vote in most parts of the United States. In Tennessee, for instance, the requirement that a person own property to vote was not done away with until the 1830s. So to vote back then, you had to be a white man who owned land. In other words, you had to be white, you had to be a man, and you had to have some money. Nobody else could vote. And what about Native Americans? The Declaration of Independence did not mean that they had a say in the American government. In fact, most American Indian tribes fought on the British side during the Revolutionary War because, because King George III had promised to them that he would try to keep settlers off their land. Remember the Proclamation of 1763? King George III said, you can't go across the mountains because that's Indian land. He tried to help the Indians. But we went across anyway, didn't the, the colonists did. So the Indians liked King George, so they helped him fight in the war. All of this leads to an obvious question. If the Declaration of Independence didn't in its time mean that African Americans, men, women, uh, men without property, and Native Americans were equal, then what did it mean? Well, here's what it did mean. It meant that laws passed by the British Parliament no longer applied. We were free from that. It meant that Americans no longer had to take orders from a king or queen who had absolute power but simply because they were descended from a king or a queen. It meant that the head of a white household could decide for himself what he did for a living, where his family lived, and how he raised his children. It meant that people could decide for themselves how to worship God, and they didn't have to change religions because a king or queen told them so to do so. In any case... Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence a long time ago. It's important to understand what the Declaration meant then, but it's even more important to decide what it means today. And I'm so glad and so thankful that in our country today, that, all, that when he wrote that all men are created equal, that finally in our country today, we believe that not only men, but women have equal rights in our country. Everybody who's a United States citizen can vote. It's a great, great country we live in. And it's been improved much over the years. And sure, there's still some things we can still do better. And that's what this lesson is all about. So as you grow up and as you vote and you start voting and you start listening to different topics, think back to this lesson about how our country could even be made better. 
All right. Because you're the future of our country. And I know you'll do a great job. Okay, you've got 10 questions to answer about this text to do today. You can go and do them now.